Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this very exciting Mason Reedy tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to get a VDB from Houdini into Blender 2.83. Now, so far this only works on Blender 2.83, so make sure you're at a nice new version, but this is something very exciting because Houdini can do a lot of cool stuff with volumes and VDBs, and Blender has fantastic rendering capabilities that can be scaled across your entire network, and since it's open source, it's free. So, here we've got a little, easy little scene in Houdini where we've just got a Taurus emitting some fire. And now we want to get this fire and the torus into Blender. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the VDB out because that is the most important part. So here we'll just stop into our Pyro import node. So I just made this fire with the shelf tool. So here we're going to get the DOP import. So if you're doing a more complicated simulation, just be sure to use this DOP import node to get your output of your DOP network into a SOP network. And then we'll drop down a convert VDB node. If you hit shift enter, it automatically connects. And then we'll convert this to a VDB and we'll select the groups we want. So we'll just go ahead and do all density, heat, and temperature just for good measure. If you only need density, then you can obviously only export that if you want to. And then all the rest of the stuff can stay the same. And then here is you know, one of the most important parts. We're going to drop down a file cache. Then here we're going to change our geometry file to a folder. And then we're even going to go and make one more new folder because this is going to save out a sequence of VDB. So it's just like an image sequence is going to be like a VDB sequence. So we'll call this VDB sequence. And now this automatically popped us into the correct folder. So we've got this. And now the other most important part of this is we're going to name this something like fire sim underscore. And now here, we need to put in dollar F and this will give you the current frame that it's on since each frame is going to be a different file. We need to make sure that each time you write a file, it doesn't overwrite the previous one. So this $F does that. And then we're going to put a four at the end, just because that'll give us four significant digits. In this, we technically only need two, because it's only 60 frames. But you know, it doesn't really take any extra file space. And you, know, you can just basically just remember $F4. And then we need to add our extension .vdb. There we go. So our fire sim, and then our frame number. So so for frame one, it'll be 0001. Since we've got the four, it's four digits, and then dot VDB, and then accept. And then we can hit save to disk, and then it will cook everything out for us. And I'm just going to stop this because I may or may not have already saved one out earlier. So now we're going to go into Blender, and here we'll hit Shift A, and then Volume, Import Open VDB. And here we've got the VDB that I already cached out earlier. And we'll hit Import Open VDB. You'll see we've got a volume here, but if we play through, nothing happens yet. Well, we can fix that. So go to our VDB and then go down this little cloud icon. And then we need to make sure that it is a sequence. So we'll check the sequence on. And then the number of frames in this case is 60. And it's starting at 1 and we don't have any offset. So there we go. And now if we play through, you can see it actually updates some. Very excellent. Now the only thing we need to do is get our geometry. So we'll hop back into Houdini. And we'll go up. If we look at our scene, we can see we've got our emitter geometry here. But since we use our shelf tool, it's creating this volume at the output of this. So I went ahead and just added a null at the end after the transform. And this is going to be where we are grabbing our geometry in this other little SOP node. So we've just got an object merge that is referencing that null that we created. And then we'll go to File, Export, Alembic. We will create a file. So name this something like metergeo.abc, make sure you add the extension in there. And then we want to export frame range 1 to 60 in this case. And then we'll go out geo, which is our SOP node that has our geometry. We'll hit accept pattern and then export. And then in Blender, we can just go to file import alembic. Here we we'll just go ahead and grab our geometry. And there we go. Look at that. We've got our geometry and I'm going to control one just to smooth this out some. But now we've got that. So then if we want to render things out, we can go ahead and tear one of these guys off and use shift F3 to open up our node editor, which can also be found in our shader editor. It's called now, but you know, trust me, just learn shift F3. Also, it's the same shortcut as the graph editor in After Effects. So, you know, it makes it easy to remember. All right. So now we'll click on our volume here. New shader, you see it automatically creates a principled volume shader. So that should make things nice and easy. Let's we'll bring the black body intensity up to one. Make sure that we're rendering in cycles. 
with the GPU, you see that this is a new install of Blender, so I don't have all the preferences set up. But if we go to Z8, you see, and now we're getting this thing all rendering nice and lovely. We had to make our background black and turn off our gadgets here. You see, look at that, just that easily. We've got a nice little fire simulation from Houdini into Blender. And of course, you're not limited to just fire. You can do any sort of volume stuff with this. So anyway, I hope you found this little tutorial helpful. If you didn't know about this feature before, I hope that this has just totally expanded your mind to the possibilities because this is very exciting. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. If you didn't give it a dislike, no matter what, leave your feelings in the comments below. If you want to support the channel, go to meesme.com slash products and check out all the cool stuff there. If you're a you know, motion graphics, visual effects person, this stock footage there is going to be of particular interest to you, light leaks and sort of atmospheric elements. I just use atmospheres myself on a project for a little title. They didn't have the budget to do big title stuff. So just boom, throw up some atmospheres, animate your kerning and you're good to go. So anyway, once again, I'm in the with Meester Media. Have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.